Hello, good people. Uh, welcome back. In this episode, I want to introduce myself and share a little bit about my residential construction background and maybe share also uh, why I started my podcast. Um, so let's get right into it. I grew up in a town uh, called Algiers, uh, which is in New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, on the west bank of New Orleans, in the Fisher Projects. That's where I grew up. So as a kid growing up, uh, all I ever wanted to do is play music, right? All you can ever find me doing is playing, uh, performing, writing music all the time. Especially, I utilize my weekends a lot. I did my studies, I did my chores, and that's all I ever wanted to do is uh, uh, play music. I played various instruments as a kid growing up. You know, I played the saxophone. I started on the drums like many uh, youngsters. I started on the drums, uh, played the saxophone. Uh, uh, I played the baritone, uh, the trombone. Uh, I played the guitar. Uh, in fact, uh, my major instrument at Xavier University was a sousaphone, you know, and I, had a, I was on full scholarship. Um, and music was my life. Music is all that I ever wanted to do. Then I had responsibilities <laughs> come through and I had to get a job. So I started working uh, during the day. But before I started working, music is something that I always wanted to do. Nothing else I wanted to do. So I had to go to the unemployment office and I went there several times. And finally, the agent called me over and asked me what type of jobs I was looking for on the board because she noticed that I had been coming in. And I told her musical jobs, and she told me that she knew 100%, there was a 100% chance there would not be a musical job put on that board uh, for employment. And so she suggested then that I take a trade. Uh, kind of disappointed and sad, I went home, shared it with family, and my, sisters came, my sister came through for me. Uh, she suggested that I take carpentry, which I did. So now uh, I, in, I enrolled in a, in a trade school. So I was taking classes at night while I was looking, seeking uh, uh, employment during the day. And I finally landed uh, one of the local fast food restaurants and I was employed there. So I was employed during the day and going to school at night. And I had three instructors. These three instructors were great at different things. Um, I had an instructor who was good with codes and blueprint reading, and, and then I had an instructor who was good with furniture making, a building, and then the other instructor was great at framing and exterior, interior finish and trim. So I learned a lot, and I compiled what I learned from all three, and then I um, uh, graduated, right? So the, as I'm going through the programs and learning all of these new skills, uh, I didn't understand or know the adversities that was going to come next once I graduated. So I went to seek employment as a carpenter and my first job I failed because I was taught new construction at, this, uh, at the trade school and I didn't know that they were all different, all being new construction, renovation, remodel, and repairs. Your approach to solving, uh, to erecting, changing, um, uh, are different, right? So I picked up on that, which means that I backpedaled. I reverted and I uh, became a maintenance man, but not disappointed at all because I learned new skills. The new skills, I learned how to unclog toilets, drains, right? Uh, I learned how to set toilets and tubs and sinks, uh, lavatories, they call them a blueprint. So the pedestal sinks, the, the vanity, I learned all of that, how to change locks, how to master key locks, take them apart, take the pins off, file them down, try to key, polish them, put them back, things of that nature. I learned how to cut uh, countertops, put the sink in them, hook up the P-traps, things of that nature, right? Very critical, vital skill. I learned how to replace, repair carpet, uh, dry back, stick back towel, you know, all the things a maintenance man does. And when that got slow, uh, being a maintenance man, I became a painter. And then I didn't know this, that m some painters may know, some may not know the differences between um, a primers and paint or the, the natural brush and the synthetic brush, or you know how much uh, coverage one gallon of paint covers. Well, there's a, a Dale brush and a glider brush, and there's a difference between them. 
uh, there's a lot of resin in primers. That's the adherent that adheres the paint, paint to it, right? So then paint has a lot more pigments in them uh, than primers. So the Dale brush is a square edge brush. If you look at the brush and turn it from here to here, the edge is a square, sharp, cornered uh, brush. The glider brush is rounded. And so uh, the, the Dale brush is thinner, maybe for novice who is trimming, things like that. Uh, the glider brush is also, well, could be for novice, but you would have to understand how the rubber meets the row when trimming, right? So nowadays, you know, they use a lot of the tape which is very much time consuming and you lose the ability to captivate uh, your, your actual inner skills. So that is something that's being taken away. So as I'm going forward and I'm learning that skill, I learned uh, uh, maintenance, I learned uh, painting, uh, and then I kind of reverted back to doing carpentry work. And now I clearly understood, although I was still growing, right, I became a, a furbishing contractor. Uh, at some point, you know, I was doing the, the work of a carpenter. I was working as a carpenter, then a lead carpenter. And then eventually, you know, I became a, a, a foreman, a became owner of a company, right? So, and then I understood when I met the company, I really had to understand project management how to have multiple accounts, a payroll account, risk are involved, things like that. And nobody tell you that when you're coming out of trade school. So these are things that I teach now. And speaking of teaching, I, am, I came from a teacher in, at a uh, technical college and uh, went from the, 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 the instructor to the lead instructor to assistant professor to associate professor, which I currently am, uh, to understand. I became author of uh, several construction textbooks. Uh, I am uh, NCCR master instructor, NCCR subject matter expert. I've uh, taught uh, OSHA 10 and 30 uh, courses. Uh, so it's a lot on my resume that I've done. So, and I'm sharing with you, you know, um, the little bit amounts. Uh, you know, I've, I'm a presenter. I've spoken at NYSAD in Austin, Texas, uh, you know, amongst a lot of folks. A convocation here at the college, things like that. You know, I've done a lot. Uh, this is my background. So I understand that there's a disconnect. So these are fundamentals that I give back in my program here at the community college that I work at, right? Uh, and so I think those things are needed and this is who I am now. Uh, giving you a little bit of introduction of myself, my background and where I came from and where I am now. Um, many times people on social media giving advice, uh, recommendations, right? Things uh, to the general public. And sometimes they are accurate and sometimes they are not accurate, as in the, that delivery, right? Uh, let me give you one of them. For example, some people may not, and some, I'm not gonna call them experts, but I'm just gonna say some people may not understand why using, my preference is to use uh, a hammer, a 16D nail, the frame with versus the pneumatic nail gun, which is a lighter gauge, right? The diameter is lighter. Uh, it's made out of maybe a different metal than the bright or uh, bright common 16D nail. Okay, so a lot of the houses today suffers during those natural disaster times uh, because of that nail. And you know, we now think of the pneumatic nail gun as faster, yes. But longevity, we don't have that anymore. And so then this is why I recommend to my students using the hammer and nails versus uh, the, the pneumatic gun, especially when something is uh, structural, right? So you don't want the house blowing away. If you look at the differences in the time span of the houses, it's not necessarily just the species of lumber, but it, it also is the, are the fasteners that's used to connect them.